Hello, everyone, and please welcome our next speaker to the virtual stage, Amit Dingare, and he's the Director of Data Science at Novellus. And today's talk is entitled Case Study on Using Machine Learning in Aluminum Industry. Please welcome Amit. You can join us here with your camera and slides. Hello. Hi, Morgan. Thank you for the introduction. Sure. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera now and you can share your slides and take it away. Sounds great. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, looks good. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about a case study on using machine learning in the aluminum industry. Um, before I start the case study, let me talk a little bit about my employer, uh, Novelis. So Novelis is a leading producer of flat rolled aluminum products. What you see on the right hand side uh, top is, is our end product that goes to our customers. We are the world's largest recycler of aluminum. We supply rolled aluminum products to four main segments, can, automotive, aerospace, and specialty products. And at the, at the bottom, you see our top customers. So if you have used any beverage uh, or if you have purchased um, an automotive vehicle, there is a good chance that you have touched our aluminum. We are a global company with uh, operations in nine countries um, and having 33 facilities, employing 15,000 plus people. So, so it's, a, it's a global manufacturing company and application of data science is relatively new for this company. So we started our uh, digital journey about two years ago with the establishment of a center of excellence. And the idea behind this um, center of excellence was to solve our, our complex business problems using application of digital technologies. Uh, to start with, we focused on operations, mainly for two reasons. First, we have, uh, it's our bread and butter, so, so we, we can generate a lot of impact through use of digital technologies in operations. And second is we track a lot of complex data through our operations. Just to give you an uh, idea, we have close to 1,000 plus sensors in each of our machine centers that are tracking data at every very small interval. So every 10 milliseconds to one minute. So if you think about big data, it's a, it's a true uh, big data area in the, in the true sense of the world. We leverage advanced analytics techniques um, comprising of mainly four, three things actually. Um, we have machine learning, we have linear and nonlinear optimization and statistical modeling. We tend to focus more on the Bayesian side of statistical modeling. And uh, we are an open source shop. So we typically use uh, technologies such as Python, Spark for building our uh, models and machine learning workflows. And we use cloud technologies to deploy those. In our plants, we have used some of the off the shelf uh, tools to make uh, it easier for the plant operational engineers to get um, benefit of this technologies. So when it comes to the, our center of excellence, we have a dual mandate. We want to create value within our operations, but in order to sustain this value, we have to build capability within our plants. So, so my team actually works on both of those things. Currently we have uh, seven data scientists across the world in, in different plants that are building uh, data science use cases um, for, for our company. So this is how a typical um, workflow for a use case happens. Uh, as I mentioned, we have um, various machine centers in our plants that track various signals at a very small granularity, at a very small interval as well. Um, this data historically has been getting stored in our plant databases. Um, and, and that has been one of the areas where we are trying to rectify it to, to, is to bring that data to a common place uh, in our data lake. But before we do that, we typically start with our local data sources and using um, machine learning and uh, various advanced analytics techniques, we build uh, models to, uh, to, to solve business problems. Once we see a successful model being built, 
then we work with our data engineering team to get that relevant data into cloud, into our data lake, and then we productionize our models into cloud. And finally, we um, send the predictions back to different interfaces that are used by operations within plants. So I'm going to talk about one of the case studies where we, we have seen great success um, using machine learning in our operations. As I mentioned, we, um, we are a recycler of aluminum. So we make aluminum coils by buying and recycling uh, aluminum, use aluminum. So we have these uh, large melters that take the, the used beverage cans or any other recycled aluminum material and, and melt it. Uh, so for our process to have a good throughput, melting time, uh, predicting the melting time accurately is, is quite important. Historically, we had a, a thermodynamics based equation that used to do this prediction. However, for various reasons, this prediction was inaccurate, which often resulted in overcooking of the molten metal. Now, this creates two problems. One is um, not only it increases the process time to melt the aluminum, but it also increases the wait time so that the next process can accept the, the molten. So, so we have to wait until the temperature comes down to a specific uh, temperature point. Because the model predictions were inaccurate, the operator did not trust it of course trust them and they kept on opening the door of our um, furnaces to take sample and check whether the aluminum has molten. Now that created uh, two main issues. One is whenever you open the door, a lot of the heat gets lost and that affects our fuel efficiency. The second is operating um, when you open the door is quite unsafe. So, so there is a safety hazard in this operation. And finally, it kept our operators busy with uh, unnecessary tasks, right? If the model prediction were accurate, they didn't have to do this task. So we decided to uh, focus on this use case uh, where our goal was to increase the throughput of our email process by increasing the accuracy of time to melt. And in doing so, our goal was to save energy by avoiding the heat loss as a result of opening the door. We, uh, the scope of, of this use case was one plant with three furnaces. We have certain constraints. Uh, we didn't um, want to change the, the furnace structure in, uh, physically. We didn't want to um, invest any additional money into, into this use case. And finally, we didn't want to make any major changes to our operating procedures. So what we decided is to build a model that will leverage data collected from various uh, sources and accurately inform the operators when the aluminum is molten. So, so this is how our evolution of the model happened. Um, as I mentioned, we started with a thermodynamic equation. This equation was based on weights and we had a single equation for all the alloys. Now, that was one of the reasons why our predictions were inaccurate. So the first thing that we did is we modified the equation to have separate equations for different alloys. And at the same time, we incorporated weight into the, yeah, sorry, we incorporated the surface area into the equation in addition to the weight of the molten. And that helped us to cut down the total melting time by 3%. The next step was to build a machine learning, a fully machine learning based model. And um, what we saw is with, with that particular approach, we were able to, on average, cut down the melting time by, by 5% from the baseline, but there was a very high variance, which was not acceptable from a planning perspective. So finally, as our last iteration, what we did is we took the thermodynamic equation that, uh, that we had modified as our base and built a machine learning model on top of that. And, and that helped us to um, get the best performance, which, which helped us to cut down our melting time by 12%. So I'm going to just show you um, how the model building process happened. So we use this historian system called Pi, which keeps track of uh, sensor data at um, every one minute interval. Um, along with that, we have a database which keeps track of all the additions that happen to furnaces. Using those two data sources, we, um, we basically brought them to a single database and 
created various features from that. So going into the model, we had 118 candidate features. We had to adjust our target uh, such that, if I mentioned that we used to have overcooking of the metal, and which meant that we uh, actually went over and above the BTU requirement um, that the met metal required to reach a uh, lower temperature. So we corrected uh, using extrapolation, we corrected the, the BTU uh, measurements, and then we trained the model on that. And I'm showing the feature importance on the right-hand side, where you can see that about 50%, about 50 of the theoretical, uh, of the feature importance was absorbed by the theoretical heat required. So, so that, that sort of like is the beauty of this model is the thermodynamics is the base and we have additional features to absorb the, the noise in the process where we open the doors, add additional materials, additional hardeners um, and, and various alloying elements. Um, our prediction accuracy was quite high. We, we did a, uh, testing on various batches and uh, we reached 95% uh, R square. Now, if you are from various other industries, this may seem a little high, but um, you, have to, uh, you have to imagine that for this particular model, about 50% of the prediction is coming from the theoretical uh, thermodynamic equation. So we deployed this model um, as a REST API in our uh, plant server. And the idea, originally we wanted to deploy this model in our cloud uh, resources, but um, once we realized that um, the plant where we are going to use it had bandwidth issues, we decided to keep the model close to the source where the decision was going to be made. And, and this is where uh, the industry is changing. That is, historically, cloud computing was the norm and now it's moving towards the edge computing. So what, what we do is we get the data from those two data sources I mentioned earlier. It comes to a single, um, database, we call it automation interface layer, where our feature engineering happens. And then the model API is called every three minutes. While when we call the model API, we send the, the features that we have generated as, an, uh, as a JSON file. The model um, takes that those features, churns out the BTU predictions as an output. Those predictions are sent back to the AIL. In AIL, what we do is we take those um, BTU predictions and convert those to the time required for um, melting the aluminum. And finally, it's displayed on an HMI to the operators. So you can see that we show two different, um, two different things along with other things, two main different things uh, on, the, on the screen. We show how much heat, was, heat is required to melt the aluminum. And we also show how much time is required to melt the aluminum. And the time, to, time required to melt aluminum is shown as a progress bar. Now this helps uh, the operator to, to look at it and um, just uh, keep on checking it every so often, but they can keep on doing uh, various other tasks at the same time. Same time. So it doesn't keep them occupied with uh, one, one single task. It also prevents uh, them from opening a door constantly because they're now getting uh, accurate prediction of the, the total melting time. And this helped us tremendously. We, our throughput increased considerably. Our uh, fuel efficiency increased uh, for this plant. And, and this, this use case actually resulted in a multi-million dollar savings for us. So, so the key takeaways uh, for today's talk um, are, if you are interested in highly high dimensional data and big data in every sense of the word, uh, metal manufacturing is a, is a very in interesting industry. Uh, we have a lot, lot of data being tracked through thousands of sensors, um, and uh, you get to do pretty cool analysis of um, and, and build models on top of that. This industry is moving from uh, traditional statistics and linear modeling to non-linear modeling. So if you are interested um, in, in applying advanced machine learning techniques, uh, definitely consider metal manufacturing. One thing that my team has learned in this experience is um, we cannot ignore the basic sciences. In fact, um, our best models are where we have used uh, physics or thermodynamics um, as our basis and built machine learning on top of that. And uh, because advanced analytics is becoming a strategic value driver for us, we are 
focusing a lot on building capability within our plants. So we are running various curriculums and um, upskilling activities within our plants. So overall, a very fascinating um, journey uh, for us and um, it's, it's proving out to be a big value driver for, for the company. So with that, I want to end my presentation and thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at uh, the email address and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Over to you, Morgan. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That was an awesome talk. If you could please um, unshare your screen and your camera for just a moment. And thank you so much everyone for attending. I really hope you enjoyed and enjoy your next session or check out one of our virtual booths and have a great time.